Welcome and thank you to everyone for joining us for the Michigan Online Visionary Educators event. My name is Jenny Patterson and I'm a design manager with the Center for Academic Innovation and I'm excited to be your MC for the day. The Michigan Online Visionary Educators or MOVE series is hosted by the Center for Academic Innovation at the University of Michigan. An important part of our mission is to create a more inclusive and global learning community. We believe an, informal, an informed, peaceful, and equitable society is dependent on learners everywhere adopting a learning lifestyle. This monthly series will feature experts sharing insights, tools, and discussions on issues relevant to the lives of people around the world. Many of the speakers may be familiar to you as the faculty behind some of our most successful and innovative learning experiences available through Michigan Online. For information on our upcoming MOVE series events, be sure to check out the schedule at online.umich.edu slash MOVE. Today, we invite you to submit questions for our panelists in the Q&A section, and they'll do their best to answer as many as they can. Given our limited time, we ask that you keep your questions related to, related to the topic. Today's event will be recorded, and the recording will be made available on Michigan Online at online.umich.edu slash MOVE. Today, I'm joined by Tina Sula, lecturer in the Program in International and Comparative Studies in the College of Literature, Science, and the Arts here at the University of Michigan. I'm also joined by Clary Boudra, Master of Public Policy 2022 candidate at the Gerald R. Ford School of Public Policy and a graduate student instructor and global engagement internship coordinator with the U of M LSNA Global Scholars Program. Welcome Tina and Clary, take it away. Thank you so much, Jenny. It is so good to be here. Tina, such a pleasure to be talking with you today. I'm really grateful that you're making the time that you invited me to be part of, of the conversation. And welcome everyone who's joining us. I think we have at least four or five continents represented here live. Um, and hello to everyone who will be watching the recording afterwards. We're really excited to be talking with all of you and sharing some of Tina's insights. Um, and so I, I met Tina first in undergrad at the University of Michigan. I came here as an exchange student from Switzerland and took Tina's class. And here we are five years after. Um, and you know I really saw the impact that Tina's class had on a lot of students um, in the classroom and multiple cohorts of students and, and really see a mindset shift, right? Um, and I think Tina, what, really what you offer is to, to highlight some of the points of thinking about um, networking is not being just transactional, right? Like we're talking about authenticity, we're talking about building relationships and we're really focusing on why we're networking. It's not just about what you're getting, you're trying to get out of it or how you network, but really why are you networking? Um, and one of the things that always really spoke to me is a big part of that why is that, you know, we build meaningful relationships to be authentic, to activate your purpose and to add value to the world, right? Ultimately, that's what we're here for. Um, and that really ties into the role of self-awareness. You know, do you know your core values? Do you know what your purpose is in order to be authentic in your networking adventures? Um, and we'll also be talking about link between networking and leadership, which is one also of the core components of, of what you share. Um, but the, where I wanna get us started today, really our, our starting point is I invite everyone to put in the chat um, an answer to a question, which is currently at this present moment, what is your level of comfort or confidence when it comes to networking? So on a scale of one to 10, with one being, I hate it, it makes me really anxious, I tend to avoid it entirely, and 10 being, I absolutely love it, I do it regularly, I feel empowered by doing it and confident doing it. So feel free to just throw in the chats, you know, any number from one to 10, you're allowed to be in the middle, you're allowed to be at the extremes, um, and it's always nice to see where everyone is, is coming from at that. Oh, I love these numbers. So while everyone um, is answering the question, I just wanted to share a bit of gratitude to start off with a bit of gratitude. So I really want to thank everyone at the Center for Academic Innovation for bringing us all together. So Trevor, Emily, Jenny, um, I also want to thank the core team that's been helping put um, my online class together. So Jenny and Ruth and Lydia and Saki and Roger and Bridget. So hello and so much gratitude um, for all of you. And of course, um, Clary, I'm so glad that we can uh, we can do this um, together. So I can see from um, 
from the chat that the level of comfort uh, comfort varies. Um, I think we probably have a very good average around five. Um, so maybe, um, Clary, how, how about I start with, with a story of how I even came to teach networking? Um, cause I, cause as I, as I teach in class, you know, stories really take things home where data and facts never can. So I graduated from the university of Michigan, uh, many years ago. And I was, I was this great student that did anything and everything that the university of Michigan had to offer. I did the internships. I did the study abroad. I did the research. Um, I mean, I really maximized my undergraduate, um, uh, education. Um, as it turns out, however, when I graduated, I graduated without a job. So what did I do wrong? Um, as an immigrant kid, I was born in Albania. So my parents made a huge sacrifice, you know, leaving everyone and everything behind so I could have a chance at the American dream. It was kind of embarrassing that, you know, here I am a great student and doing everything, but I didn't have anything um, to show for it. So the big lesson that I learned is that, yes, America is the land of opportunity. But the thing about opportunities, and this is universal and global, opportunities don't fall from the sky. Someone, a human, has to give those opportunities to you. So it took me probably five or 10 years after graduation to get that aha moment. Um, but it really was the start of me really understanding the power of networking and then how can we network effectively Tina, thank you so much for starting us off with that that story right it's it's really the story of how did you end up teaching that class why do you teach on networking and i i love seeing in in the chat like as you're saying we have a lot of fives of sixes of sevens we have some people who are below, you know, the three who are, we have one person I think who wrote minus 10 uh, and some people who feel really confident at nine or 10. Um, and I think it ties to what you're talking about, Tina, too, of, of some people might be in, you know, joining the event and thinking, well, I, I know I've heard, I think that networking is important. I, I know, but I don't necessarily know how to do it, right? How do I go about doing that? And we'll talk a lot about it. And I also wanna encourage everyone, especially those of you who are, you know, eight, nine, tens, or those who are at fives, anyone who has been like working on that, Feel free to share your insights, you know, in the chat. We're we're trying to build this also as a community and being able to hear from, you know, for to learn from one another's insights. And so, Tina, I'm I'm curious to ask you, like, based on that story, right? What was your journey from that experience of yours to now you're teaching about networking, right? Like you've developed a framework of networking, you've developed tools to give to students. So where do you want to start us off in like what your journey has been and, and where does that take you now in terms of sharing that in through your open course? Yes, thank you. So where it all started is that I had the, I have this networking story in itself. Um, I worked at the University of Michigan, and then I was going to transition and go work at Henry Ford Health System. And my exit interview was with a dean in Singapore. And I remember being at the Mario Batali restaurant, drinking Singaporean slings, and the dean said, well, we're going to miss you. Is there anything, you know, that I can do for you? And I said, well, actually there is. And he says, oh, what is it? Like, why are you asking me on your last day, right? On the last week of your uh, time with us. And I said, I really wanna teach a class on networking. And I said, I don't want any other student to have the same experience that I did. I want to empower students to figure all this stuff out before they graduate. So initially, I will be honest and say that it was all tricks and tips and do this and don't do that. And then with time and even learning from my students and really incorporating, you know, what I what I learned from students in the classroom, I now have a framework. And now I talk about the networking mindset. And now we talk about the networking process. Um, so let's begin. Um, by talking about the definition of networking, because a lot of people will go on Google and I, you know, I get this feedback from, from students or, you know, students I mentor, where it's, I know that networking is important, but what is it and how do I do it? So the, the way that I define networking 
is that networking is about building, nurturing, and activating relationships to reach a goal. So I think, um, I think starting with that definition is really, really powerful so that we can have conversation around it. Um, after that, um, the networking mindset, I mean, the, just a definition of a mindset is how you think about things, right? So the networking mindset really is all about the belief that we can achieve our goals and our purposes through our relationships with other people. So initially, when we start thinking about networking, you know, it becomes this question of like, what do I do and how do I do it? But the challenge that I have for everyone is how do we transition from that to how do I think about networking? And I'd love to hear your thoughts, Clary, you know, on that, on that transition. And you hinted a little bit um, earlier that that yeah. was a, you know, that was a big takeaway for you. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think for me, I really resonate with the shift from thinking about what do I do? How do I do it? To really thinking, why am I doing it? Right? Like what's, what's the purpose? What are the values? Um, and what am I trying to achieve, but not just in a transactional kind of way, right? But more thinking, um, you know, if, if it is that you're hoping to do a job transition or you're hoping for new opportunities or you're graduating, really thinking, why? Why am I interested in what I'm interested in, right? And, and that mindset shift for me was also about thinking, you know, when I'm networking, when I'm connecting with people, I'm really doing it based on we have similar passions, similar issues that we're interested in. We have similar sets of values. And that's what we're connecting on, right? And then from that, there might be opportunities that go both ways, especially as you progress in your career. Um, but it really is about shifting from, it's not just about what you do or how you do it. It's also about why you're doing it. And I think that that why is something that both through taking your class, through my time at the Ford School here at U of M, through my time working with the Global Scholars Program, I've really focused on refining that part of the why, what are the values? Um, and, I, and I find that that's where I tie in the, you know, how to build authentic, meaningful relationships, right? That go beyond that transactional model, that if you don't know who you are, what you want, what you're excited about, what are the, the passions that you have, it's, it becomes really hard to connect with people who share similar values, right? And I, and I think that's one of the things that I've most observed, Tina, in, in the, when I was in the class and, and with students that you've had since, right, of thinking, oh, I'm not just doing this to get a job or to X, Y, or Z, fill in the blank, right? But really thinking about I'm building relationships by being authentic in what I'm excited about and what I, what I want to progress in. Um, so I don't know, Tina, if you want to speak more to that, of that question of how do we use that mindset shift to go beyond something that's transactional and really ties into what I think, what I know that you care very much about in terms of authenticity. Yeah. So um, oftentimes when I get asked questions and there's like a lot of questions that are going to come up, it's like, okay, how do I do it? Um, I often am the really strong person or the strong teacher that says, well, who are you? Right. And what do you care about? And why do you need the help of someone else, right? So networking is about building, nurturing, and activating relationships to access opportunity so that you can reach a goal or purpose, right? So I put to access opportunity in, um, you know, in parentheses as a reminder that we network because someone else has an opportunity that we seek. Right. So this is where I said humans give opportunities to one another. So as you know, as people are thinking, oh, I need to learn because I need a job, you have to do the self-work. You know, you have to do the self-leadership of defining, well, who are you really? And what are you trying to achieve? And I mean, that's a that's a hard question. You know, who are you really? Like what makes you you? What do you value? Mm -hmm. So um so I have a framework and if anyone wants to connect me with LinkedIn, you know, on LinkedIn, I can share the link a little bit later um, and I can give you an, a visual of this framework. But for me, it really starts with networking in the sense of we need to engage with others. I mean, that's why I started teaching this class. And then I started asking the question, well, why is networking important? Oh, networking is important because we want to influence change of some kind. 
And in order to influence change of some kind, we need others to help support us. Well, influencing change, that's leadership. And then why do we influence, why do we want to influence change? Well, that's purpose because there is something that motivates us that is uniquely ours where we say, hey, I want to move the needle in the space because it's important to me. You know, Simon Sinek says, start with why. I mean, why do you care about what you care about? You know, and I have a lot of students who will ask the question of, well, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what my purpose is. And I say, okay, we'll start with your curiosity. You know, what do you do when no one's watching? What do you read? You know, what do you dedicate your time? Because what you dedicate your time it's the, probably the most valuable thing there is because that says what you value. Time, you only, we all only get 24 hours each day. So once you, can, once you think about your experiences and um, you, know, you can come up with, with um, dots that connect, there is something uh, to be said by sitting down and saying, hey, what are the you know, positive experiences that happen in my life, the negative experiences that, I, that happen in my life, and what do they have in common? What I've learned from, um, from psychology is that 50% of our values are shaped before the age of five, um, 90% are shaped before you're a teenager. Um, I think this is why I'm turning into my mother, FYI. Um, so you know, who we are and what we believe you know, if we really think deeply about it, it was really shaped when we were when we were young, unless we had a big event, you know, in our lives that makes us really shift what we believe. So, for example, because, you know, I've been in healthcare philanthropy for a long time, you know, when somebody has a disease or cancer, they change their thought process, you know, around what's really important to them and, you know, that who they are and what they value. So networking is the how of leadership and leadership is the what of purpose and purpose is the why. So think about it. Um, we all need a destination. So that's the what, that's the leadership. That's a change we wish to see in the world, you know, to go back to Gandhi's quote. Then we have a vehicle in terms of how to get to that destination. And that vehicle is our relationships with other people. And then the fuel of it all, right? What gives you power is your values and your purpose. And that's pretty powerful. Once you come to the realization that that's what the framework is, then it becomes a question of doing the self work to figure out what you care deeply about. And, you know, and Clary, like, please, you know, please share, you know, it's, it's hard work, right? This is work that is ongoing you know, to be on purpose, right? And I, and I picked this up reading one of my daughter's books, right? To be on purpose means to be intentional. And being intentional requires a lot of intentionality, meaning who are you? What do you care about? And what are you gonna do about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and building from that also from some of the comments in the chat, right? Like it is hard work. Right. Like there's no easy. Here's the list. You just do this and you'll get the dream kind of whether it's career or professional opportunity, whether it's in your personal relationships. Right. Like there is no cookie cutter recipe, but some people putting it in the chat. Right. Really, this is this is hard work. And I love that one person mentioned, you know, maybe a lot of people would have a different career if they really knew who they are. And I love that point. I really love it. That's a great point, because. Yeah. What I what resonates with me in that, too, is to think that I think a lot of what we're talking about, you know, can resonate with people who are, you know, high school students or who are in undergrad or through their career, um, starting their career or who are you know, 30, 50 years in. Right. And who are making big transitions. And I I'm also a big advocate that I think all of what a lot of what we're talking about applies not only to professional, the professional context, right? It applies to personal life. And I, and I think that that's also something that you really anchor your work on, right? Of thinking there isn't that strong of a distinction or a separation, right? Who you are at work and who you are as a person. And there's a lot of privilege in that. And at the same time, a lot of work that goes into it, right? A lot of work of thinking, 
how do I build my own sense of my own values and my self-awareness in order to find opportunities that align with my skills, with my strengths, with my values, and where I can both feel happy in, but also do my best work, right? And I think that a lot of the conversations we had in the class, the conversation we've had since, right, were really about how do you find those opportunities, those environments, those people, those relationships where you can feel at your best to do your best. And it sounds so easy when you say it, right? But there is so much really deep work that goes into that. And I, yes. and I love all the emphasis that is being put both in the chat and in what you're saying about this is an, an ongoing process, right? There isn't a point where you're like, okay, that's it. And even, I love that so many people in the chat, you know, put that they are at a 10, right? They are at a 10, they feel really comfortable, they're doing it and they're logging into this event and they're continuing to think about it and learn from it and sharing insights with others. And I love that, that's, that's really what this is about. Um, and I would love to go back to that to, you know, you said um, what we're talking about is really about building, nurturing relationships, activating relationships. Can you walk us through, like, what do you mean by each three of those terms? What does that look like? And how does that connect to that self-awareness that, and that awareness of your own values? So there are lots of questions, you know, around that because that becomes the how-to, right? How do I do it? So um, I think of it as, um, you know, networking is that pathway to leadership. And the first thing that needs to happen is that engagement has to happen. I know you, Clary, and you know me. If you and I do not know each other, if there is no introduction of some kind, then you're not going to be someone I offer opportunities to, and you're probably not going to offer opportunities to me, right? So if networking is a relationship, a relationship involves at least two people, right? So if you have this dream of, oh, I would love to connect with this person or how cool would it be if I knew this person? Number one goal is how can you meet that person, right? Do you go to a networking event? Do you reach out to them you know, directly on LinkedIn? Do you send a cold email? Do you know if you have a friend in common you know, that can introduce you? But the, really the first part has to be that connection. So that's the building of the relationship. Nurturing a relationship is all about trust. The it, trust is absolutely essential to any relationship. I mean, it is the core, the core piece of a relationship. Trust is everything. So a lot of questions I get is, well, how do I build a relationship with somebody? And then, you know, I often say, how do you build the relationship with a friend, right? So um, Clary and I were in the, you know, the same class. This was what, three years ago, four, I don't know. Four years ago, yeah. Four years ago. Um, so you, you know, the, um, our, you know, our guests today were probably wondering, how did we nurture our relationship? Mm -hmm. You know, Clary and I, we have lots of great conversations. So I'm based here in California. Clary's in Ann Arbor. I go for a walk. She goes for a walk and we keep on talking, right? We promote one another, whether it's on social media or, I mean, even probably like late last night for you, probably at one or two in the morning, here I'm sending resources and links for her saying, hey, you should, we're like, you should think about this opportunity, mm -hmm. right? Because trust is based on, Clary, I see you, I know you, I know what's important to you, and I care about you living your best life. So as I think about my purpose, my purpose is to inspire others to live their best lives, right? And the reason that's important to me is because my parents made that sacrifice so I could live my best life. So that's how I show up in the world. I send opportunities. Um, I mean, think about it. You know, I am doing this online course because of Clary. Clary saw the opportunity and she sent it to me and said, hey, you should apply for this. And I said, no, I don't, you know, I don't think I can do that. That's not me. I don't even like being on camera. And then she's like, no, you really need to do this because, you know, networking is how you lead. Don't you want to influence more people so that they can articulate their purpose and live their purpose-driven lives? So I tend to do that in the classroom where I push my students. So this time, uh, Clary gave it back to me and said, okay, let me give you a taste of your own medicine. So it's been, you know, it's been a, a year. 
um, almost a year. And, um, you know, I'm so excited that we're bringing this together. But, you know, I share that as an example of what trust building looks like. Actually care about people. I mean, care is such a basic word, but it's such an important word. Um, they say that people do business with those they know, like, and trust. I mean, that's at the core of networking. So once you have met someone, once you're, you've started creating you know, and nurturing that relationship, well, the next step is leadership. You know, where you're saying to somebody else, hey, follow me or I'll follow you because what you're trying to achieve and what I'm trying to achieve, there is alignment between our purposes. So mm -hmm. then leadership becomes inspiring others to reach a common goal. So I am the best number two person ever. And by number two, I am the person that when I see somebody with a great idea, I show up and say, okay, great. How can I help you? So I don't have to be the leader. I don't have to be the CEO. I don't have to be the anything. I lead when I get to live my purpose. And living my purpose means how can I support other people in living their purpose? And this insight I really got from the Center for Positive Organizations at the University of Michigan. I mean, the purpose of a leader, as Bob Quinn says, to help their people live their purpose. So that's the pathway. You gotta you know, build the relationship, a point of connection. You gotta nurture that relationship and show the other person that you care deeply, that it's, it's all about transformation. As a result of us coming together, we're gonna do something bigger and bolder because we're doing it together. And the opposite of that is a transactional relationship. You do this for me and I do this for you. And there's not much trust in that, although trust can be built off of that. But when it's high trust, magic happens because people want to share opportunities with you. They want to engage with you. They want to be a part of your tribe because they believe what you believe. And from my experience as a working professional, as a mom, with all the identities that I have, the greatest thing in, in the world is to find your tribe, people who believe what you believe, because those are the people that are going to give you opportunities. And sometimes some of these opportunities are opportunities you, where you might not have the skill set, but somebody believes enough in you to say, hey, here's the opportunity. I know you can learn it. And we're going to do great things together. Yeah. And I want to build on, on two points that you mentioned on that, because one of the things that really stands out to me in that piece of the question of authenticity in maintaining relationships, right, is, is also I, I kind of encourage everyone to think of that and how it applies to your own particular context, whether that's cultural, whether that's geographical, but also depending on what industry you're in, right, like, because I might look different across those different contexts, right, networking doesn't look the same for me here in the U.S. as back home in Switzerland, um, and, and, but I think that the, some core principles remain in terms of you knowing why you're doing it, knowing your values, knowing what you're hoping for. Um, but, I, but I think it really is a question of what is authentic, right? And if you're in a situation where someone reached out to you once and you connected and you maybe helped them out at that point or there was something you could help them out with and then you don't hear from them or you don't hear if, you know, if you introduce them to someone, you don't hear if it went through or not. And then two years later, they reach out and they're like, hey, I'm, I again, like need something or I would love for you to connect me to that person. It might be harder for you to feel trust, right? To feel that authenticity of, oh, that person actually really cares about connecting with me, not just with the opportunities I can provide. Um, and even something as simple, I think, and that might be more aligned for young professionals or students or some people who are earlier on in their career, but thinking about how can I just keep people updated, for example, right? Like that professor who wrote you a letter of recommendation or that person, that supervisor that you had for an internship two years ago who made an impact on you, you can reach out and, you know, follow up and say, hey, here is what I'm doing now. Here is my next chapter. And I still take X, Y, or Z from our work together, right? Or I would love to connect again and just chat about what I've been doing over the past two years and any insights you have in how I'm developing my career. And again, we're focusing on that career development, but it can also be 
reaching out to someone and, and being like, hey, I'm, I don't know much about your industry or your area, but I'm really interested in it. Would you be excited? Would you, would you be interested in chatting with me? Um, and the good thing is that people often like to talk about what they're excited about. And so if you meet people who share similar values, similar purpose, you know, it, it can be exciting for people to get to share about their work. Um, and so that's one thing I wanted to mention in terms of that piece of authenticity and also bringing in the really think through what does that look like in your context across cultures, across industries, there might be practices that are, that are, that are different. Um, and I think that the, the second point for me is really when we're thinking about building, nurturing the relationships and then like how to use them to activate, it's really thinking about how can I support that person and that person support me. And the core of that being we're connected because we care about similar things. And one of the things that really stands out to me in that also is, you know, it's really hard for you to find workplaces that align with your values or, you know, work environment and work cultures and the kind of work that you're doing if you're not aware of what it is that you're hoping to do, right? And so yeah. being aware of what kind of environments do you do your best work in, right? Do you strive in hyper-competitive, semi-toxic environment? Do you strive in very collaborative environment? Yeah. Do you strive in slow-paced, fast-paced? What kind of work gets you excited about your work, right? Um, and yeah. if you are in the position that you have the privilege to think through, what am I most excited about, right? If you have that window of choice and of opportunity, really doing yeah. that work of knowing that for yourself. So uh, two comments, and I learned this as a professional fundraiser. Um, building trust, in my opinion, is all about the follow-up. So I always said that I'm, what makes me a good fundraiser is that is my follow-up and my follow-through. So because it's easy to meet people, right? You meet somebody. I mean, I meet people at the grocery store line. I meet, you know, I become best friends with the person on the train who then says to me, hey, I'm an executive at this you know, resort. And if you come to my resort, I'll upgrade you. I mean, I have so many of these stories because people want to help, right? People really want to help, but they can't guess that you need help. So it's a matter of you going out there and telling people. Um, and then of course, once you tell them, make sure you follow up and follow through. You know, it's so important. There's no point to going to an event and getting somebody's business card if you're not gonna do anything with it you know, within 24 hours. If you're not gonna do anything with 24 hours, I mean, just throw it in the trash because that's just, you know, that's as good as it is. But if you take that business card and then you find the person on LinkedIn, you send a personalized message and say, it was lovely to meet you and I learned this about you, really try to find that point of connection between you and that other person. So um, in my class, we also talk a lot about alignment. You know, strategic networking is about alignment. So it's a aligning, you know, your clarity of purpose, your clarity of goal with a clarity of opportunity. It's really hard to get clear on your purpose and it's really hard to get clear on the opportunity that you're seeking. But the clearer you are, the more opportunities you're gonna get. So I'm gonna give everybody this um, example um, because it, it was like a ha, an aha moment for me. I drive a Ford Explorer. Hello, Ford. You know, <laughs> um, the thing about Ford Explorers is I never noticed Ford Explorers until I started driving a Ford Explorer. Now that I drive a Ford Explorer, every time I drive on the streets, guess what? I see Ford Explorers. The parallel here is this. Once you get clear on your purpose and you know exactly what your purpose is, all the opportunities that exist in the world, you're only gonna see the ones that align with your purpose so that you can maximize your impact. You can be like, nope, that doesn't align, align that opportunity doesn't align with my purpose or that company's purpose definitely doesn't align with my own. I'm definitely not gonna spend time dealing with them. So. Focus on that clarity, focus on who you are and how do you articulate who you are. So don't introduce yourself as, hi, I'm Tina, the, you know, I am Tina, the fundraiser. That's going to work with a, such a small segment of the population. But if you introduce yourself as, hi, I'm really interested in helping people live their best lives, then people are going to be like, well, tell me more about that. that, that there's something there. How can we connect? Because a lot of people want to do that but not a lot of people want to be fundraisers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And Tina, I want to bring in one question that we've gotten a few of them like previous to the event. And I know it's something that has come up with my own students. It comes back a lot is, OK, this all sounds amazing. It all sounds great. I definitely think that's important. But, you know, I'm, I'm shy or I you know, have social anxiety or I'm nervous or this is just uncomfortable and unknown. Like, I don't know how to do this. Like, it sounds great. But how do I do this if I'm like uncomfortable even going up to the person to get the business card in the first place, yeah. right? Or to, to start the interaction. And, you know, even when you're talking, like you're in the train, you're in the airport, you're in the coffee shop and you connect with people. A lot of people can relate to that thought, that emotion yeah. of I wouldn't do that, right? So right. What, what do you want to share about that? Well, um, believe it or not, introverts are better networkers. I, I really believe that wholeheartedly. I mean, just think about it. Um, introverts, it starts with in, so you're more internal. Um, they're intentional, right? So they're on purpose. So the, the people who know themselves really, really well, because they spend the time to get to know themselves, um, they're a lot more strategic about okay, I know what I want. Now, how do I go about doing it? So when I think about the networking process from like my networking process is four steps. What's the goal? Who, you know, can help you reach that goal? Three is go out there and actually engage, start building their relationship. And then four is follow up and follow through, right? Feedback and, and um, continue building that relationship. So I find that introverts will take action and focus on being on purpose, where I think a lot of extroverts focus more on their personality um, as opposed to thinking more deeply about, okay, well, what really is my purpose? So I hope that gives, you know, gives the introverts a bit more confidence because it's not about how charming you are and how well you talk to people. People are really inspired by your stories what makes you you? Because that's what builds trust fastest. Mm -hmm. And people give opportunities to those they know, they like, and they trust. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I, I tell me to add to it, or as you know from class, feel free to challenge me. Yeah, like I, I, say I know class. that, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I laugh at that because I think that Tina and I's relationship and friendship like really started from some of the moments we had in class where I would challenge some comments or some discussion, right? And really start like a conversation and Tina challenging us as students to think beyond what we're thinking or, or go beyond. And the, the only thing I'll add to what you were saying is I think there is something very real that you know needs to be acknowledged in the, this is probably going to be very uncomfortable, especially if it's new, especially if it's something you're not familiar with, especially if it's something that brings up any kind of insecurities as it does for most people, right? I get yeah. uncomfortable and nervous when I do anything related to networking. But I think that there is something really powerful in thinking about how being self-aware of your values, of your purpose, of why you're doing it, of what you're hoping to do through it can help you think, but it's worth it, right? It's worth it to face the fact that it might feel uncomfortable and yeah. also knowing that you will do it imperfectly. And if you're doing it and doing it imperfectly, it means you're doing it right. Um, the goal, especially if you're you know, more early on as a networker or as someone who engages in networking, you're not going to do it right. And so the good news is you're not supposed to put that pressure on yourself, right? I am learning about networking and engaging with people every single time I do it. And I'm, I'm a young professional, right? I am not someone who's like, I'm not at a 10 on the list of, on the scale of networking, right? Um, but by doing it, I've also become a lot more comfortable doing it because I'm a lot more comfortable saying, this yeah. is what I'm passionate about and excited about. And I get excited from the fact that I can tell we share similar things with that. Yeah. Um, and that makes it a lot less stressful in a way to think, oh, the goal here is for me to be authentic. It's for me to be myself. It's for me to let myself not do it perfectly. Um, and even if you're socially awkward doing yeah. it, that also works. Um, and I, I want to also just really invite more people to throw in questions um, in the Q&A. We've already gotten a few, so we, we're going to be sure to cover those, but really feel free to add anything. Um, I don't know, Tina, if there is any one that you want well, to build on. the last one is, uh, is how, I don't know how to pronounce, is it Age? Age? Beautiful name. Um, how about small talk when networking? How important is that? So think about small talk, you know, as an opportunity to find points in common. Think about small talk as an opportunity to build additional trust. 
So it's never small talk if you don't want it to be small talk. It could start as small talk. Oh, hi, nice to meet you. But you can turn it into something bigger. I talked, the true story, I talked to somebody for five minutes. Then they said, I'm really in need to, of hiring someone who can do this. And right there at the cashier at Ralph's, I said, I'll text introduce you right now to somebody who may be able to help you. Right? So really being, being that, um, that person who can find points in common, whether you network for yourself or you network for other people, the best networkers are generous. I mean, it's really important to say, you know, to say that and to acknowledge that. The best networkers know who they are, they're authentic, they're vulnerable, you know, they know where they're trying to go but they're very, very generous and they're very grateful because that's, you know, that's what building trust is all about. So even if somebody has an opportunity that doesn't really align with what you care about, can you be that person that says to them, hey, let me introduce you to my friend or let me post that opportunity or send it on a listserv that I'm a member of because that is an act of caring, right? And acts of caring build trust. Right. If you do something nice for somebody, I mean, you can read lots of books on influence. When you do nice things for people, they want to pay you back, even if they don't have to. Right. So be the person that takes care of people and be the person, you know, that pays it forward. I mean, I'm a believer in energy. Right. I'm you know, I have connectedness as a top strength and I believe we all connect, you know, put good energy in the world, because the more you give you know, I'm, and I, I'm sound like I'm preaching, but the more comes, you know, the more that things that will come your way. Yeah. And one thing also that stands out to me in the small talk is, I don't know if anyone else can relate in, in, in this event today of like, when I hear small talk, I tense up a bit. Like ten, small talk is not something I enjoy doing at all, but I do find that if you bring curiosity and passion about the things you're excited about into small talk, what you're doing is connecting. And so I think that having that, that shift of like, it's not just I'm doing small talk to get something through networking. It's you're connecting. That's what you're doing. Uh, and yeah. for me, at least, I really low is the, the, the pressure in many ways. Um, I also yeah. see that we have a, a question in the Q&A section that is about how do you transform a mentorship into a reciprocal friendship? Specifically, how can a mentee identify and promote the purpose of her mentor and provide value in reverse? I love that question. I'm curious what you think, Tina. Well, actually, I'll, I'll give it to you because I feel this is what this is what you do well. I mean, you and I started as in, you know, I was the teacher and you were the student and now we're, we're peers. So yeah. how do we how do we get to that? Yeah, I, I think it's such an important point because it really touches on how do you make something be reciprocal, especially when there is potentially like a difference of like advancement in career or experience level or even differences in identities and many other dynamic. And I think that similar principles apply, right? Like that curiosity, that authenticity, um, but also remembering that you being passionate about a specific topic means that you're already bringing things in it, right? Like I'm finishing my master's right now. I work as a teaching assistant and I work with a professor in our relationship, our professional relationship is very much a reciprocal relationship, right? I have gotten so much mentorship from that person. And I'm also participating in our conversations about the things that we're passionate about, right? We're educators, we're people who care about social justice and global issues. And so I think that thinking of that already as something that you're doing to nurture it. And then the second part is something Tina already hinted to is, is you know, if you see opportunities that make you think of them, mention it to them. But when I say opportunities, I don't mean just this in, in a achievement, again, transactional kind of way, but I see that email on the listserv about massive open online courses by the Center for Academic Innovation. And I think I love Tina's class. I think she's really benefited me and it aligns with my purpose of making those resources accessible to more people and especially more globally. And so I forwarded it to Tina. That took me 30 seconds, right? Um, but it can be there is an award in your company or organization, but even just there was this book that you saw that made you think of them. 
But I would really, again, emphasize that that will depend on your context. But the key here is to do something that feels authentic, right? Like not just, oh, I saw this random thing and I'm going to send it to you for no reason. But, oh, we've talked about this a couple of weeks ago. And you mentioned that you're really interested in it. I listened to that podcast and thought you might enjoy it. Even that is something that I think can really nurture a relationship. Um, and also knowing that, you know, you might be a mentee or a mentor now, but that might change 10 years from now, 15 years from now, right? Like my relationship with my current students um, is something that I invest a lot of energy and care into. I love working with students and I know that my students are going to go off and do great things. And who knows, I might be the one reaching out to them and being like, hey, I know nothing of your industry, or your job. I would love to learn about it in 10 years. Yeah. And, and they're already teaching me as we are in this relationship. So those are a few thoughts I would share on that one, but great question, really. I mean, it really is about that point of connection and the point of connection only happens when you really get to know somebody. So as you're investing time and in building a relationship, you're getting to know more and more about what the other person values. And once you know what they value and what they care deeply about, um, the opportunities can be you know, anything, as long as you believe that there is a point of connection and you can answer the question, well, why am I sending this? Like, why would my mentor you know, care about this. Another thing I think this is especially um, important for students is that your perspective and the fact that you are engaging and sharing your perspective, you know, at this stage in your lives is enough. You know, so there is that biconditional relationship. I, you know, I'm going to learn from you and you're going to learn um, for uh, me. So because we only have a couple more minutes. So networking can be very competitive. How to prove that you deserve an opportunity more than someone else. So that, that question is a really, really good question. Um, and I, the way I can answer that is people give opportunities to they, those they know, they like, and, they're, and they trust, right? So the competition is no longer competition when you see alignment. Um, when you see alignment between the mission of the company that you where you want to work with your own purpose. And then when you see that what you care about is what that hiring manager cares about too. So spend the time to try to get to know, um, you know, the people and the culture of a company and make sure that they're doing work that you care deeply about. When you're interviewing, whether it's formal or informal, make sure, and I keep saying make sure, but really make sure that there is alignment and you are interviewing them just as much as they're interviewing you. You can say, I want the opportunity and I was one in a million who got it. But if it's not going to allow you to do what you want to do with your life and you're going to be miserable after that, what's the point? Because this is your life. And I, the last thing I'm going to stress is that leadership is personal leadership in terms of how you make decisions and what you care about is really powered by your values and your purpose. And it doesn't come with a manual. So if you want to have maximum influence, i.e. strong leadership, figure out who you are and what you care about, because that is what's going to inspire people to join you and to support you and to give you opportunities. And, and my final, final comment is people say, you know, networking is not about what you know or who you know. I will challenge you that until, you know, the end of my time. Networking is not about those things. Networking is about who knows you and who trusts you. So if you're not out there getting to know people and telling your story and sharing your purpose, you're really missing out on opportunities. Information is power because information gives you access to opportunity and opportunity is power. And remember, opportunities come from other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the only thing I'll, I'll build upon on that is really, you know, my parting thought is really about like authenticity and, and thinking that when we're talking about building trust, building relationships, I think that there is something that's contagious about excitement and passion and curiosity and investment, right? And, and that I think that being authentic in that is a great way to build trust. And especially I see a few added comments in regards to like following up on the comments we made about introverts, right? And, and the question of what do you do if you're shy? What do you do if you don't know how to do this? I think that starting with that piece of authenticity is, is a really powerful way of doing that um, because it, it makes people 
be able to trust you even when you have you're having to like work through more barriers in terms of being comfortable doing that um tina is there a final question that you want to follow up on out of our list i just shared my linkedin so if anyone wants to connect on LinkedIn, I've learned that teaching is about building community and that we can do a lot more when we do it together. So feel free to add me and to continue the conversation. All right, Tina and Clary, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your stories and insight and wisdom. Um, I, I, for one, I had always thought of networking as tips and tricks and maybe some awkward conversations uh, at a conference. Um, and I just, I love the mindset shift um, to starting the networking process with really understanding your own purpose and goals um, and values. Um, and of course, for our participants, thank you all so much for joining us as well. All right, you can check out upcoming move series uh, dates, times, and uh, guests at online.umich.edu slash move. You can also follow Michigan Online on social media platforms. Uh, again, we so appreciate you joining us today and submitting your questions. If this topic was of interest to you, I encourage you to take part in some of the courses we have online, such as Tina's own course, How to Network, Leading Yourself to Lead Others, which will be coming soon, as well as the Career Kickoff Collection. This takes us to the end of today's MOVE series event, and we thank you again for joining us. <laughs>